Welcome to Chicago State University's Black Media and Entertainment Industry Conference. This four day event is sponsored by the Communications and Media Arts and Theater Department here at Chicago State University. To access the program for the conference, go to csu.edu slash cmat and click on events. I'm Christine Houston and I am a lecturer at Chicago State University in the communications, media arts and theater program. And I teach script writing for stage, television, and film. And I am so pleased to, to be here today with Sarah Johnson Finney, who has just finished uh, a season with On TV with Queen Sugar as a co-consulting producer, and also Alicia Cohen, who has wrapped the second season of Southside. And these two women, I am so proud to say, have made a profession of writing successfully. And they're here to let aspiring writers know some of the tools that they'll need in order to become a successful writer in television and film. And I'm not going to do all the talking because I'm going to start with Sarah Johnson Finney. And I want you to start by telling our audience some of the tools that they really need in order to become successful as a writer. Uh, well, first of all, I think you need to be prepared. And by that, I mean, people always say I'm a writer, but where are the scripts? Where's the play? Where, you know, where's the material to show that you are a writer? That's like your calling card. So learn your, learn your craft. You know, uh, everybody doesn't have to go to school for it, but I would highly recommend <laughs> trying to take a class or, or if that's your major, just, just learning how to write or, you know, get a book, read scripts, just be prepared and have that script ready. That's most important, I think. Um, and then when you, you know, the opportunity comes, you have it. So that, that's the main thing I would say, be prepared and learn your craft. And some of the things that they need to be, how would they, what are the steps they need to take, Alicia, to be prepared as a writer? Um, I think similar to what Sarah just said, like when I first started saying I was a writer, I was writing absolutely nothing. It was me just uh, saying I was doing something. And I was lucky enough to have a mentor to be like, yes, yeah, stop calling yourself this because you're not doing anything. Um, and that's what like prompted me to take write like two writing courses I ended up taking at UCLA because I live out in Los Angeles now. But it that was like a wake up call for me. It was it was just such a it seems like such a simple thing for somebody to say, and it seems like you should already know it. Um, but you have to write, like you have to start somewhere. Um, you can't just keep saying that you are something, but you're not honing your craft. You know what I mean? So take classes um, if you didn't go to school for it, because I didn't. I took. I was a journalism major. So the classes drastically helped me like get my start. So just write, I guess is my advice. Yeah. Well, I understand what you're saying, but a lot of our audience will sit down and decide to write. And I try to in, uh, express the, the need to be able to do grammar and punctuation and the English language in order to really start to write. Because a lot of times our writers will sit down and start writing and when you read the writing, because they don't have the, the basic skills, 
I want you to talk a little bit more about the basic skills that they need in order to sit down and start writing. Sarah? Well, I think, um, and I agree with uh, Alicia that basic skills you can learn mm -hmm. and you can learn and either take a class, there's gotta be community college or, or like I said earlier, there are so many great books out. Sid Phil has a great book about screenplays and there's other books about uh, our drama TV, half hour. Go online, my God, when I started, there was no real online or internet situation. So, you know, you had to do what you could, but now you can find everything you need online. You can look at scripts online. Mm -hmm. Is let's just say you're fortunate enough to get your script in the hands of the right person, and the the grammar is all screwed up and the structure is all wrong. It's it's not going to go well for you. So you don't want to blow that one shot you might get. You really need to have your script in order. And there are people who I think are just naturally gifted. I do believe that they can sit down and write, but it still has to have some sort of shape, some sort of form you may be able to tell a great story, which is the core of everything, a good story, but how do you tell that story in a half hour, in an hour, in a feature? How do you do that? You have to learn that. So I, I just think that, yeah, when we say prepared, I think what Alicia did, UCLA does have an excellent writing program. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you're not near UCLA, there's gotta be a community college near you. There's gotta be a way to get a book. There's got to be a way. Most people have laptops. You can go online. So there's really no excuse not to have it looking right. And it's not just the look, but also to have it make sense. So that somebody who's trying to read this and maybe decide if they'd like to work with you, they need to know that you know at least the basics. Mm -hmm. Alicia, how did you get involved in Southside? Um, so Southside was actually my first show that I ever staffed on. I, I was a writer's assistant, like, uh, maybe a year or two before that. Um, but I basically had been kind of doing my own thing as a writer, um, kind of making my presence a little known in the independent filmmaking world. And I believe that that's, that helped, uh, get me on Southside, um, just because I feel like my voice was coming together and it was just kind of a great, I don't know, meeting of the minds and like perfect timing. Um, and I had also met with all of the execs on Southside um, from Comedy Central. I had two prior meetings. Uh, but the show hadn't even been like picked up to series yet. Um, but I was taking these meetings because the show was potentially gonna get picked up. And when it finally did, I was finally able to meet with like the creators and yeah, it just, it just worked out. And I, I honestly feel so lucky being from South side of Chicago, that literally being the first show that I got to work on. Um, and it's a great show. So it's, it's yeah, my reps and my, my, you know, everything I guess led up to, to me being staff on that show. So yeah. Sarah. If an aspiring writer right here in Chicago decided, I need to go where I can really get a break. I'm going to move to LA and see if I can't break into the industry. What would you suggest that they do? Well, I suggest you have a job before you come here. <laughs> That's what I first suggest. You can feel it to pay. That would help. <laughs> And even after you become a writer, trust me, there's unemployment. So <laughs> okay. yeah, you need to get a job. And, and I'm glad you brought that up. I wanted to mention, there's a, um, a place, entertainmentcareers.net, and it is legitimate. I tell everybody to go there. People say, I want a job. Well, I don't have a job to give you, but entertainmentcareers.net does. And they have jobs all over the country, but you know, specifically LA and New York and Chicago, it's uh, a lot, there's a lot of TV and theater work and, and just, you know, behind the scenes and in front. So I would say, go there, it's legitimate. You send your resume, you see what happens. It's, it's worth a try. I think Alicia was saying she was a writer's assistant. That's how I started. I was a, a writer's assistant long, long time ago on the Jeffersons. 
And that's how I got my first break. I got a freelance script. I was sitting there every day. I was doing my little spec scripts. I was telling producers, I'm a writer, I wanna write. So finally they let me in to pitch. So I think if you can get your foot in the door, whether I was a PA also, by the way, I mean, I started, I was delivering sandwiches, dropping people's kids off, whatever I needed to do. I was a PA and very happy to at least get my foot in the door. And then I became a writer's assistant and then I got on staff. And writer's assistants nowadays, it is tough. That's a real, because that's a prime job now. Because you know, you're, you're in the room, you have access to the producers and to other networking uh, outlets. So I would say, try to get your foot in the door and then say, hey, I'm ready. I got a spec, would you look at it? You know what I'm saying? It's just hard. Also, Alicia brought up something else, representatives. That's very important. If you can get an agent or a manager, because nobody will read unsolicited material. It's a little too risky. And also they help get your foot in the door. So, you know, I'm not saying that you can't just out of the blue, you're lucky enough to send your script to Steven Spielberg and he opens that envelope. Well, you know, <laughs> that might happen. I don't discourage any dreams. Trust me, it's all possible. But to make it legit, you need a rep. Now the catch 22 is most reps don't want you unless you're working because then they're going to get paid and you can't get a job unless sometimes you have them. So um, I think this is still happening. The writer skill used to have anyway, a list of agents that would read uh, new writers. And that's how I got my first agent. So, because it's, it's kind of hard to just walk up, up to CAA and, and be, you know, okay, we'll take you. But just get a legitimate representative. As long as there's somebody who you know knows what they're doing, they're authorized to do it, I would go with that. Um, also, I would say another way to get in, uh, Alicia mentioned uh, doing some independent work. Now, I mean, you can shoot your own movie on your iPhone. You can put everything you want on YouTube. So many studios and networks and producers, they look online for material. They look for fresh voices. So there's, you know, I was kind of confined to four networks at the time when I started. There was no Netflix. There was no streaming services, nothing like that. So now you can create your own work. Don't wait for somebody to just give it to you. Go out and show them, I shot this. Take a look at it. Look at my reel. Look at my scripts. There's so many festivals you can get your scripts in. There's so many programs. So just, you have to use those resources that are available to you. Yeah, absolutely. And just to piggyback, piggyback off of that, um, prior to when I shot my first short film that ended up being successful for me, I wasn't getting staff. It was like, I, I did a writer's program. I went through the NBC Writers on the Verge program and my plan was to stay at NBC until I got staffed and I was, I was, I was a coordinator, which is an assistant. Um, but I just, I was like, oh, you have to quit this job and, and just go into full blown writer mode. And as soon as I quit that job, it was like, that's when the writer's assistant gig came available to me. Um, but prior to that, I shot that short because I wasn't getting staffed. And I didn't think my voice was where it needed to be yet. So the short really just helped me figure a lot of stuff out that I needed to figure out in order for my voice to come across on paper. Um, so I knew like my writing at the time, maybe for TV wasn't where it needed to be, but doing that short really like it opened a lot of doors for me and it just helped me discover who I was. And then after that is when the staffing came. So again, like you can do stuff in the interim. You don't just have to sit and be still and wait for people to come to you. Um, there's just so many possibilities, like Sarah said, just starting your own stuff, you know? And I think it's great that you were in that NBC Writers Program. There's a, a lot of those programs now. And so I'm sure that was very helpful to you as well. Yep, it was. Alicia, do you have an agent? I do. Um, and how did you get to agent? Agent came through the writer's program. So a lot of the writer's programs, at least when I did it in whenever that was, 2014, 2015, I can't remember. But the point is to, you know, get your material to where it needs to be and to get you representatives by the end of the program. 
Um, and that's what happened. I was lucky enough to, to get reps and that's what started to get my foot in the door because like Sarah said, I wasn't, it wasn't happening prior to that. Um, agents and managers have access to people that you just don't, especially when you're starting out. Uh, so yeah, it came through the program. How did you get your first agent, uh, Sarah? It was through the writer skill. They, as I said, they um, had a list of agents who would read new writers or new material. So I just got the list and, and picked five people and sent out my material and got one. And, you know, it was, the person wasn't, uh, you know, like a big baller or anything. So the connections weren't that great, but they were legitimate and they could get me in some doors that I couldn't get in myself. And then after that, you know, I moved on to other agents and, and now I have a manager and an agent, but I started out with the agent that I found through the writer skill. So wherever you can find that agent, you should try to, to, to utilize them and help have them help you get in the doors that you can't get into. And you don't have to be a member of the writer's skill, correct? I don't think you do, just to, to ask about that. I don't think so. I, I don't think I was a member at that time, no. But now this was a long time ago. So I, I don't know that that is still what they do, but I know they used to do it. Well, I believe that now uh, in order to, <clears throat> it's like you said, a catch 22, in order to uh, get a script done, you need to have an agent and you need to have sold a script and you can't sell a script unless you belong to the Writers Guild in some instances. But isn't there uh, <clears throat> a ruling where the uh, FCC says that a production company has to accept at least one unsolicited script in a year? I'm not sure. Someone said that? I haven't heard of that. Mm -mm. Okay. Me either. There's no ruling where they have to. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. Well, some of the um, students at here at Chicago State University are very interested in breaking out. And that's why I'm asking all these different questions because they have these questions and they will bombard me with them and I tell them, if I don't know the answer, I will find it out. <laughs> so usually I might call you, Sarah, and ask you certain things. And, and Sarah has always been very, very helpful. Uh, and I will be calling you too, Alicia, <laughs> because <laughs> I always want to be up on the latest since I'm not actually working in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't given it up. I'm still writing because I, I tell them you have to write constantly. If you're gonna be a writer, you have to write. And the more you write, the better you get. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I'm, I, I want you ladies uh, to be an example of how far uh, you can get in the writing field if you really and truly wanna be a writer. And from what you have uh, shared with us today. I think that it will be an inspiration to aspiring young writers or older writers. I don't know why I use the word young. Aspiring writers, period, no matter how old you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you uh, had to, I say, mentor a young writer, Alicia, mm -hmm. what, <clears throat> what would be the things that you would take that writer through if, say, I brought a person to you today and said mentor them because they want to do what you do? Um, for me, I guess, mentoring, what was most helpful for, helpful for me is just honestly people reading my material um, because that's the only way you can get better. And by people, I mean like people, people who are actually critiquing and giving you notes, not people who are just 
telling you what you wrote is great because that's not going to be helpful. But I've learned that a lot of people will give their material to people and their friends will just be like, oh, this is amazing. And it creates this false narrative and it's just not a good situation. So for me as a mentor, I would read your material and try to give you the most honest feedback that I possibly can. Um, just as far as story and your character set up, because um, for me, those are the two most important. Um, comedy, obviously jokes, but like you need a story and jokes will always come. Uh, so that's the, the biggest thing. And especially for comedy writers, uh, and I probably still struggle with this, but story is important. You know what I mean? And I feel like a lot of times we all go into it trying to be the funniest we can be. And then your story kind of falls by the wayside. Um, so a lot of scripts that I get in from like newer writers or up and coming writers, uh, it tends to be more on the, the joke heavy side, but nothing's really happening in the actual um, story of it all. So I would just critique and give you feed, honest feedback on, on your work. And that's, I think that's my form of mentoring, if that makes sense. Well, Sarah, how would you mentor? Oh, I agree with Alicia. I think it's good to be honest and help people structure and get the story because I don't care if it's a half hour, an hour or a feature, everything's about the story. We can add jokes, we can make it funny, but you got to have a story, a strong beginning, middle, and an end. And if that doesn't work, and then you don't have an episode, you know, or you don't have a movie. So yeah, the help, helping someone with that structure is very important and making sure it makes sense. Yeah. Have either of you ever uh, written a 10 minute show? Um, I did a short once, but that's about it. Um, and I think it was like 15 or 15 minutes. Yeah, same, a short and a sketch, uh, but yeah, that's about it. On, si on South Side, how has it been uh, fulfilling to work there, to work with that? Cause it's just an amazing group of people uh, and everybody's from Chicago and it's just everybody's there for the same goal. Like we're just trying to make the funniest show we can make while making you also love these characters. Um, but we literally, we just laugh all day. I'm not, and it's not, I'm not even saying that just to say it. Like it's, everybody's funny and it's just hard not to have a good day on Southside. Like it's just such a, a great group of people. So I, I love it. I cannot complain at all. Tell us about Queen Sugar, Sarah. Um, I love it. I was always a fan of the show. So you can imagine uh, finally getting the chance to write on a show that you loved. I mean, that was like a dream come true for me. And also an amazing group. Anthony Sparks is our showrunner and he's just fantastic. Ava DuVernay created this great show and Ava's around too. So it's just like, um, and, and also the staff. This is one of the best staffs I've ever been on. And I say that because uh, people encourage each other. We cheer for each other. We laugh a lot too, even though it's a drama, you gotta have some humor. I just take my humor everywhere I go, it doesn't matter. And they feel the same way. So we just have a good time working on this beautiful, creative project that you know has endured and lasted for six years. So that's the beauty of it too. And um, I think it's just so rich and the stories we get to tell are relevant to what's happening, especially to the black experience. So it, it's just been an honor and a privilege for me to be there. Do you pitch stories on Queen Self, Sugar? Well, the show's been on for six years. So at the beginning of the season, you know, the showrunner already knew a direction he wanted to go in. So we pitch on that you know, on each character and, and how they evolved, uh, their story arc. And so those are the things we pitch on. And then we break it down into to episodes and then we're assigned an episode and you go off and write, you bring it back, everybody gives you notes, you know, and, and then the showrunner has, of course, he looks at it, he's the final person to see it and Ava DuVernay. And um, so that's how it works. You know, the writer's room is, is a place, uh, thank goodness, where people can feel comfortable 
and they can pitch and say what they want. And, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's up to the showrunner. Yeah. And do you pitch uh, ideas on uh, South Side? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we come in pretty much, uh, Bashir and Diallo, which are the creators, uh, they make it a point to like, when we end each day, it's like, yo, go home. If you think of any crazy ideas, whatever, any, any pitch, whether it's based on what we're currently working on, like whatever episode we're doing or not, but we come in, like, if you happen to have a pitch, um, we come in with pitches like every day and depending on, you know, how they go over, we'll throw them on the board for like a later episode. And it can even be just like a one liner. Like it doesn't even have to be full thought out beginning, middle and end pitch. Um, sometimes it's a joke, but yeah, definitely pitching, pitching away in there for sure. Well, it's, it's so hard to wrap this up. And uh, before we do that, I just want a final statement from both of you ladies that would inspire. What would you say to inspire and motivate uh, a new writer or an aspiring writer? Uh, Alicia, you can go first. Um, I would say this might sound cliche, I don't know, but do you, um, do you and be you. Uh, I, I found a lot in my earlier writing, I was dumbing my crazy voice down um, to try to appease to more like network television or whatever, you know what I mean? And that's not my natural voice. So it's just don't go into it trying to intentionally create a certain type of material. Write what you write, write how you write, and don't dumb it down. And that's my biggest thing, because that was the biggest hill I had to overcome. And you're always overcoming something um, when you hit different phases, when you start actually pitching your own series and all this stuff. Everything's just a new learning process. But if you're comfortable in your own skin, it, it goes, you go farther is what I've experienced and, and discovered. So just do you. Well, Sarah, you have done so many uh, projects and been associated with so many television shows. Uh, I would like for you to expound on uh, what you plan for the future because I know you are nowhere near retirement age. And so, uh, what do you see in the future for you? Well, and I just wanted to add to what Alicia was saying. I would say, too, to, to aspiring writers, keep writing. You know, you must write if that's what you want to do. Writing has to be a passion. Yes. It's not just something, I know someone who wanted to write a family member, and they said, you know, I just don't think so. I said, no, then you don't need to do this. <laughs> You're not sure about it. Yeah. If it's not in your blood and in your heart it's not going to work um, because there are going to be times when you don't work. There are going to be times when, you know, I, when I first started, there were people telling me I would never get a job in TV. I didn't know anybody. I didn't have connections. I was a, also a journalism major at USC and I was going to be an on-air reporter, but I always wanted to be a writer. I just didn't know how to get started. I didn't know, you know, there, like I said, there's no internet, there's no nothing. And so I met one person uh, who knew somebody at Norman Lear's company. And I met the woman in human resources there. And I called this lady and I called this lady and she finally gave me an interview. The same day I got my PA job, I got a job at ABC News. So I had to decide, you know, am I gonna try this creative route or I'm, I'm gonna go news? And I said, I'm gonna give myself five years. And if I'm not writing on a show, I'll still write, you know, I, cause I was into poetry and plays and all that. I said, but I got to pay bills and I got to survive. So fortunately, you know, Norman Lear, as you know, Christine, I just have to get in how wonderful this man was. Yeah. He really helped so many people, especially black writers, you know, Judy Ann Mason and Michael Moy, yeah. who created Married with Children, all that, they both won the, I think it was called the Lorraine Hansberry Award. Right. Norman started. 
So that's how I got started. And I was his PA for a while. And I remember one day I was driving him somewhere and he said, so what do you want to do? And I said, oh my God, Norman Lear is asking what I want to do. I said, I want to be a writer. <laughs> and so the next day he's arranged for me. I'm sitting across from Alex Haley. I mean, that's how he was. He wanted to inspire and encourage. And because of that, and I also, because I saw other, writing, other writers being promoted, I said, oh my God, I can do this. You know, I got to just focus and keep writing. And that's what I did. And, and as I said, with the Jeffersons, finally, you know, I was a writer's assistant and then got to pitch and sold a couple episodes. And then I, my writing partner at the time, Vita Spears, and I went on to do all sorts of half hour comedy. So I would say you, you have to be persistent. You have to do that and, and make sure, as I said earlier, to be prepared. And I also throw in, because it works for me, I just have to pray <laughs> because I just think Absolutely. it's that I'm still here after 35 years uh, that I was able to reinvent myself from just a comedy writer to a drama writer to writing whatever I want. And that's a miracle because that doesn't always happen in this business. So it, it, it took a lot of strength and courage and prayer, but I'm just so happy to be a writer. Like you, Christine, I hope to always write. You know, oh. whether it doesn't matter if 10 people come see my one act play or a million people see it on TV, I still want to write because it's what I love. And you asked about what I'm doing in the future. So I do have two projects that I'm working on outside of Queen Sugar, but I'm hopeful, you know, Queen Sugar, we might come back for season seven, I'm not sure but it, it's just been a joy to be there. Do you still have a writing partner? No, um, when Moesha, let's see, I left Moesha to go do the Parkers. I ran the Parkers and she stayed at Moesha. So that's when we split up, but she's doing very well. She's still writing. And so I'm happy for her, but I just needed to, you know, I needed that opportunity to sort of do what I wanted to do. And when you're in a partnership, you know, you have to consider what the other person wants to do. What about you, Alicia? Have you ever had a writing partner? Uh, no. Um, no, yeah, I haven't. I, I mean, I've, no, yeah. <laughs> I, I've had someone who's directed most of my stuff, which is Derek Dow, who's a professor at uh, Chicago State. Yeah. Um, and he's the one who directed The Big Chop. Uh, so shout out to him. But no, never a writing partner. Always been solo. I've never had a writing partner either. And the students ask me, is it important to have a writing partner? I think it, if you need one, you should have one. Uh, because it is good to have someone to bounce stuff off of besides yourself, which you may think is funny, may not be funny. And if at least two heads think it's funny, it might be funny. So. Uh, that's where a writing partner comes in handy. Yeah. And uh, you, yeah, usually you see part you of comedy. That. Yeah. Pardon? I said, usually you'll see writing partners in comedy. Yes. I haven't seen any drama or, well, in features, I've seen partners too. Yes. Yeah. I think uh, Grey's Anatomy had writing partners on it. Uh, and it, definitely is a drama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, writing partners can be uh, important, but they're not necessarily what you need. Uh, like I said, if, if you need to have someone to bounce your ideas off of, uh, that's good. But uh, partner in writing can be very helpful. I know you know that from writing with uh, Vita. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, years, yes. So uh, Alicia. Yes. What, uh, what do you see in say two years from now that you will be doing as a writer? Do you have anything special in mind that you really want to do? Yeah, I would say two years from now, I sh in my brain, based off of now, currently what's happening in my life, I should be 
developing a series if it's on the air by then uh so yeah i'm just developing right now and uh in my brain i should have a show in two three years so um yeah and again sarah did you expound on what you plan to be doing a couple of years from now um still writing hopefully <laughs> and, and, and where these two projects take me so that's what you I'm didn't doing. want to tell us about your project no no there's <laughs> development so okay well finally uh i said earlier we were going to wrap but we have a few more minutes and uh if there's anything that you want to expound upon for our students uh, who were, were very, very excited and anxious that you were uh, gonna be on this panel today. Uh, I would love for you two to have the last word because they can listen to me all day, every day. But to have you two uh, ladies who have accomplished so much, it is a pleasure and an honor for you to uh, have the last word on this panel for our aspiring writers. And Alicia, I, I don't know why I keep uh, going to you. I just want you to talk some more. <laughs> um, any last words? Uh, for make be have fun, make it fun. Write stuff that you care about, um, because that's the only reason I feel like I have a career is because I write stuff that I actually care about. Um, whether it's based off of something that's happened in my own personal life or a friend's life or whatever. But Big Chop was about natural hair. It was about my journey going natural. I wrote it. Ended up on HBO. Uh, it's just like, do, write what you love and what you enjoy and what you are passionate about and uh, stuff can happen is what I would say, but have fun. Well, uh, what, um, what would you tell someone who, who came to you and said, I want to, I want to work on that show you work on Southside. Mm -hmm. uh, is it a possibility for me to get on that show? Uh, I mean, everything's a possibility, but yeah, I mean, I think right now we're, we're locked on, on, on staffing or whatnot, but, uh, yeah, at, that would be what we were talking about earlier, as far as like your reps and them submitting you for the show, you know, that's kind of the process for that. Um, and you have to have material to be submitted for shows, uh, nine times out of 10, so I would say get your material in order and get your samples ready, get your scripts ready and actually have them in like working order where you, you, you are comfortable sending them to people because once you start sending stuff out, it's, 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 it's your voice and people are reading and this is who they're seeing, you know what I mean? Based off of the words that you wrote that they're reading. So have your material ready, basically, if you wanna be on any show, I would say. Is Queen Sugar accepting any unsolicited scripts? No, and that's <laughs> why we've been emphasizing that no one really, as far as I know, wants to read unsolicited material because it's a legal issue. You know, what if you read somebody's script, great as it is, but you weren't able to use it, and then you came up with something similar, not the same, but similar, mm -hmm. you know, then they'll say, oh, but that was my idea. But, mm -hmm. you know, so it's just too muddy. You need, when things are sent in by an agent or a manager, it has, it's, it feels, it's legitimate. It's like, you know, we can come back to your agent and manager maybe and talk about it, but you can't go back and forth with people about, oh, that line was mine or that thought was mine. Writers think alike. A lot of us have this, a lot of the same, very similar thoughts. Mm -hmm. So I don't think anybody wants to get into a legal battle with somebody so you just got to find representation, if at all possible, or you get your foot in the door, start as a PA, start as a writer's assistant, get to know the producers, let them, now, once they know you, they will, and you tell them, I don't want to always be a writer's assistant, I am a writer. 
And mm-hmm. most people will respect that and, and look forward to helping you and trying to, you know, figure out a way that you can be in the room with them a little bit more. So there's ways to get in, but just send a cold script to a show. I, I don't think that works. Mm-hmm. Well, ladies, it has been truly a pleasure having you on this panel and having you give valuable information to our aspiring writers. Our students are most grateful. And so is the Department of Communications, Media Arts and Theater here at Chicago State University. We we hope that your uh, careers continue to soar and we will be watching and looking for anything and everything that you have something to do with. We have truly appreciated this moment with you. And thank you again for being a part of this panel. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for having us. And now we will have a, a close to this panel and the following panel will be at six o'clock and it will be on the diversity and the equity of uh, industry, television and film. So all of you who are interested in the rest of this panel, please go to csu.edu slash CMAT and click on events. And thank you again, ladies, for being so gracious to appear on this panel. It has been a real pleasure for me. Thank you. Speak to the people in the industry. Yes. One last thing I see in the chat, some good questions. What shows are good to spec? I would say um, spec your own original voice. That's what I would say, first of all. And then one was about uh, how to make, keep ownership. You need to register all material. With yeah. the right material, you got to make sure your material is registered. Okay. And you do not have to belong to the Writers Guild to register. Exactly. You don't you, have to be a member. You right. just pay a little bit more right. if you're a non-member. Right. And the Writers Guild West is in LA and the Writers Guild East is in New York. Right. So that, thanks. Uh, I meant to bring that up and thank you so much uh, for bringing it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.